the TH-400 is a myth, but it started as a mistake. Nobody at General Motors meant to build a monster. They weren't trying to change racing. They weren't trying to terrify Ford. They weren't trying to create a transmission that would outlive entire cars, outlive entire families, outlive the damn factories they came from. All they wanted was a heavy-duty automatic for big cars and big engines. That's it. That's the whole story until it wasn't. Because sometimes, just sometimes, Detroit trips over something brilliant. Sometimes you design a tool and instead you create a myth. The TH-400 wasn't engineered in a boardroom. It wasn't dreamed up in marketing. It wasn't a pretty drawing on a drafting board. It was an accident, a happy one for us, and an absolute nightmare for anyone who tried to kill it. The automotive world has seen transmissions come and go. Power glides, C6, 727s, AODs, 4L60's infamous glass jaw, but nothing, and I mean nothing, matches what GM accidentally unleashed in 1964. And here's the crazy part. Most people who talk about the TH400 have no clue what made it so unstoppable. They say, it was beefy, or it was heavy duty, or they used it behind big blocks. That's like looking at a grizzly bear and saying, yeah, it's pretty fluffy. You have no idea. The truth is darker, smarter, harsher, and exactly the kind of engineering story GM never advertised because they didn't need to. The TH-400's reputation was written in broken drive shafts, snapped axle shafts, and cars that survived abuse they had no business surviving. But to understand how something becomes unkillable, you have to understand the one thing GM accidentally got right. And that story starts inside the case, in a place almost nobody talks about, the Sprague. Now, if you've never seen a Sprague clutch in person, imagine a row of hardened steel wedges wrapped in a circular cage. Its only job? Hold. Hold against torque so violent it would twist lesser transmissions sideways. Most automatics use a simple roller clutch or a cheap Sprague design, not the TH-400. GM gave this thing a Sprague the size of your fist. And here's where the accident starts. They overbuilt it. They made it too strong. They made it with too many elements. And when racers discovered what that Sprague could take, when they bolted a TH-400 behind engines it was never designed to handle, the world realized this wasn't just another automatic. This was a weapon. But the Sprague alone wasn't what made it legendary. It's what the Sprague worked with, the gear train. A triple planetary setup with stout gears, thick teeth, and needle bearings that look like they came off industrial machinery. You could drop this thing on the shop floor and it would chip the concrete before it chipped itself. And those planetary gears? They were so overbuilt that in most TH-400 failures, the gears are the last thing to die, and usually only after the driver has done something catastrophically stupid. But the real secret, the part even seasoned transmission guys whisper about, is the oiling circuit. See, GM engineered the TH-400's oiling system to flood the internals with fluid. Every clutch pack, every drum, every bearing. Most automatics rely on precise, balanced pressure. The TH-400, it practically drowns itself. It cools while other transmissions bake. It lubricates while others starve. It anticipates heat before heat ever shows up. 
It's why you can run a TH400 in a heavy car with a 500 horse engine, with a terrible converter, with mismatched gears, on a hot day, with a rookie behind the wheel, and the transmission still shrugs and says, yeah, I'm good. What's next? Now let's talk about the clutch packs. GM didn't cheap out here either. Thick steels, wide frictions, tough drums. The direct drum alone is a Goliath, cast with so much material that racers struggled to find its limit. It's not uncommon for TH400s to run with original 50-year-old drums and still hold insane power. Then there's the vacuum modulator, a tiny brass and rubber lung that senses engine load and adjusts line pressure on the fly. This thing is why a bone stock TH400 will shift calmly in a Cadillac. And then you swap the modulator, bump pressure, and suddenly it shifts like a pissed off drag car. Effortlessly, predictably, brutally. Oh, and remember that thing GM never advertised? The switch pitch. A torque converter with variable stator pitch. It could flash like a loose converter one second, lock up tight the next. GM used it on Buicks. Racers used it everywhere. Another accident, another advantage, another clue that the TH400 was not meant to be normal. And yet in all of this, GM had no idea they created a transmission that would be used in ambulances, tow trucks, military trucks, drag cars, RVs, diesel conversions, and performance street monsters. The TH400 didn't just work behind big block Chevys. It thrived. It didn't panic when torque hit. It didn't shatter like the 700 R4. It didn't melt like the early 4L60Es. It didn't grenade like the C6 under repeated abuse. It just lived. The TH400 lived in cars that died of rust. It lived in trucks that snapped frames. It lived in drag cars that scraped the bumper at every launch. It lived in vans that ran hot enough to fry eggs on the floorboard. And when GM eventually turned it into the 4L80E, they couldn't improve the internals. They just added electronics. TH400 DNA was strong enough to survive the future. But here's where the story gets fun. When hot rudders discovered something weird, you could take a bone stock junkyard TH400, open it up, and the internals still looked good. The steel's barely blue. The sprag's still tight. The planet's still smooth. The bushing's barely worn. It was like opening a time capsule, a survivor, a machine that refused to age. And that leads to the biggest question of all. How do you kill a TH-400? Short answer, you don't. Long answer, you'd have to try. Hard. You'd have to detonate the sprag by slamming into reverse at speed. You'd have to cook the fluid until it turns black and stops being fluid. You'd have to starve the pump. You'd have to run a converter so mismatched it screams for mercy. You'd have to hit it with torque numbers it was never advertised to handle, yet somehow still does. Nobody kills a TH-400 by accident. You kill a TH-400 the same way you kill a legend with neglect, with stupidity, with abuse beyond human reason. And even then, it might walk away. GM didn't advertise any of this. They didn't brag about it. They didn't tell the world what they accidentally built. But mechanics knew. Ricers knew. Guys in garages knew. Anyone who bolted one behind a built big block Chevy knew. This wasn't a transmission. This was a dare. A challenge. A statement. It said, go ahead. Try to hurt me. I dare you. And today... 60 years later, the legend still holds. 
You can talk Ford 9-inch. You can talk Dana 60. You can talk Power Glide. You can talk Muncie Rock Crushers. All great, all iconic. But the TH400? That's the one Detroit built by accident and the one nobody has been able to kill on purpose.